the Israelite school of universal practical knowledge under commanding General Yohanna presents the Big 5 -0. Oh, oh, oh. The 50th annual Lord's Passover, Saturday, April 20th at sundown. But I'm here to tell you one thing. Whatsoever life you got, you better go out there and do the will of the Most High like it has never been done before. And see you The 50th annual Lord's Passover, Saturday, April 20th at sundown. Shalom. It is a life school, Universal Practical Knowledge. Coming at 1 West 125th Street, Heart of New York. So, my school is Israelita de Conocimiento Practical Universal. Desde 1969, enseñando la verdad a, la, a, la, a nuestros hermanos, los morenos, a los latinos, a los indios nativos. Somos de verdadera gente de la Biblia, israelitas, ¿ok? Y, y lo, lo que vemos en, en este. Día moderna es la destrucción de la familia latina, de la familia morena, de la familia indio nativa. ¿Entiendes? What we've seen is the, de the destruction all day long is happening in the black community, the Latin community, and the Native American Indian community. You know what I'm saying? And nobody, and guess what? And it's like it's happening, and you know, ain't nobody gonna pay for the injustice. But guess what? God see it. God see the injustice is happening to his people. And although we might not see it, guess what? We'll see it when the next hurricane hit the heartland of America, or the next tornado. I love seeing tornadoes hit the heartland of America. I love seeing that. I love hearing about the school shootings in white neighborhoods. I love it. Because all that, we've been, we've been suffering that for too long. We've been suffering school shootings. We've been suffering the um, um, opioid epidemic. We've been suffering all kinds of, of gun violence in our neighborhoods. And in, in American trees, it's like, it ain't no thing. It's comic books, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's theatrics, you know what I'm saying? That's how we get treated. But when it happens to little Vicky, when it happens to Vicky, everybody got to start to panic because little old white Vicky, you know, something happened to her. Something happened to Travis. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, Bradley. A little old Scott. You know what I'm saying? Something happened to them, everything stops. Now, nah. we got a God, black man, that will protect us. You know what I'm saying? That fight for us. The same way he fought for us in the days of Egypt, during the days of Moses, is the same way he's going to handle this European that controls this land. You know what I'm saying? Let's get, let's get some Zechariah 11 and 5. But the problem is also, the brother was bringing about certain of our leadership. How, how, uh, certain of our leadership side with the same people who destroy us. You know what I'm saying? Like Steve Harvey. The brothers all day long talking about Steve Harvey. Stop talking about uh, Mayweather. Talking about all the black leaders and Hispanic leaders. It ain't just black leaders. It's Hispanics and Native American Indians. Like, you see what's going on in our, our communities, in our reservations. There's more sisters being missing in the re on the reservations. A lot of brothers don't even know that. You go check out the news. A lot of sisters go missing on the reservation. You know what I'm saying? Nobody speaks about it. All the way it speaks about some. If you hear about it, is if all by chance some all, um, news network gets the story, but you will never hear it on Fox News or CNN. And, and guess what? The leaders of our people don't give a damn. Let's read this here, and we're going to see what it says. Zechariah, right? Zechariah 11 and what I want, 5? Let me see. Verse 5. Yeah, that's what I want. Right there. Let's start right there. I can't entender algo, mi hermano latino. Aquí en América, ¿verdad? Llegamos acá a prosperar, a buscar una vida nueva. Y que sucede que en nuestro barrio, ¿verdad? Nuestro vecindario siempre hay un crimen que nadie habla, nadie dice nada, nadie, nadie le importa. 
Aquí en América nos trata como porquería, como un, 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 un cuento de, de, de alas, ¿verdad? Algo de embuste, ¿verdad? Un libro, un libro de fantasía. Nadie dice nada sobre eso. Y en parte de eso, nuestros líderes, nuestros líderes no sirven para nada, son porquería. Tremendo, ¿sabes? Lo que tenemos es un chiste de líderes, liderazgo en, el, en la comunidad latina. ¿Entiendes? Mientras tanto, el oprimidor se sale con los de ellos. Se sale con los de ellos, los, nuestros líderes, nada. Estamos en Zacarías 11 y 5. We're in Zechariah 11 and 5. Read. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 5. Who's possessed and slay them? Understand? If, we, if, black, if you're a black man in America, Hispanic, Native American in, in America, in Central America, in South America, in the Caribbean, and if you buy down in 2018, 2019, we're in 2019, right? We, we 2019, according to the white man. If you, if we by now don't know who's oppressing us and slaying us, then we are totally lost. If we don't understand that there's a people out there that hate us, that hate us to their most deepest core. You understand? Deep down inside. And if you somebody like, what's the name with the mustache again? Oh, damn it, up. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey, damn sure can't see that. What's the other dude named Perry? Uh, Tyler, Tyler Perry. Lee Daniels, you know what I'm saying? People like that, that like a Jennifer Lopez and, and, and Luis Guzman, you know what I'm saying? Oh, people like that, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're Miriam Barza, the water captain, the home of the Washington DC uh, mayor. Can't see that in 2019, there's an oppressor that hates us down to their very core and keep slaying us. Now we have to be the most retarded as people, and I hate to say it, but it's real. We got to be the most retarded as people not to see these things. But guess what, black man? We see it. We see it. We hear about it, and we also see it. It's not like how it was back in the day, right? Back in the day, months would pass by before you heard somebody in the black community got lynched. Years might have passed by before you heard the news of, of, of Emmett Till or whatever. Some, some, some type of event like that. There's cameras everywhere now. Everybody carry a camera on them these days. So when it comes out on video, best believe it's something that we caught on video with video footage and audio. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like a mystery any longer to not know that our oppressors slay us. You know what I'm saying? We see it all the time. We got people like George Zimmerman. Anybody remember George Zimmerman? Right? George Zimmerman got away with his. George Zimmerman killed our brother, right, Trayvon Martin, and got away with this. And then sell the weapon on the auction block. Like, you know what I'm saying? The water general, that, that is true too. Speaking of cameras, we all know that the cops got body cams. It, it, uh, our body cams on themselves and on the dash. And yet they still kill us. And yet they get away with murder. And yet they commit these crimes and nobody says nothing about it. And the little roar that they is said is quickly quiet up. It's quickly become old news. But let that happen to little Robbie. <laughs> little Robbie, the news of missing Robbie will go on for months and years. And they'll keep it in cold orange because little Robbie went missing. But if it happened to Julio or Pedro, you know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. They'll find Pedro somewhere on the border somewhere with like about 20 other Hispanic brothers dead, with 20 other brothers and sisters dead somewhere in the, de in the border desert where Donald Trump wants to build a wall. That's why they'll find Julio and Pedro. Nobody will care about it. It won't be a big deal. You know what I'm saying? It won't be, it won't be the CNN news. That, that's not important. You know what I'm saying? To God, black people, Hispanic, it's very important. It's dangerously important. We just don't understand this. God said, who's possessed and slay them? Read. Verse five, who possessed and slay them? and hold themselves not guilty. God even laid it out right there. All possessors slay us or kill us, murder us, and in their mind, they're not guilty. And we see it. We see all the, all the things that these, these Europeans, these slave masters do to us. They take them to, they take them to, to the, uh, the, 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 the courts, right? And what happened? Not guilty by reason of this. Not guilty, insufficient evidence. Not guilty because He was threatened, for, he was scared for his life, really. Really. Come on now. 
that's getting away with murder, and it's all good, right? How, how many people ever heard of the Modoc Indians? Anybody ever heard of them? Anybody, Modoc Indians, you ever heard of uh, the Modoc War? Anybody know the history of that? You know what I'm saying? Very few people know about these brothers and sisters. Whole communities of brothers and sisters out in the West Coast who were murdered by the same oppressors. Killed by the same oppressors. But they said that the Modacs attacked. Now let me see, let's do some history. Who went to whose land first? It wasn't the Modacs. The Modacs didn't go to Europe. The Modacs didn't go to England and to Spain and to Germany and to Austria and Luxembourg, Holland. They didn't do that. They were here in their own communities, within their own land, within their own borders, doing what Modoc Indians do. Being themselves, being a family unit. Here come these oppressors, these Europeans, and crash landed in America, what they call America today. You know what I'm saying? Crash landed, boom! Came like a bomb, boom! Killed families. Families, you understand, you understand? This is, we're just talking right now, what they call the United States of America. They estimated it was about over 125 million native Indians. Now feel this for a second. By the time the Europeans went and spread it like virus, there were about 50 million left. It decimated half the population. And then they kept going until they brought it down to nine million. Now where the native Indians at? You know what I'm saying? In that war with the Mora Indians, even to this day, they'll use that as an example of what, of the, of the justification as to why they do the things that they do. They still use that example of Mordecai attacking them. The Mordecai Indians didn't attack anybody. You invaded their land. So what you expect them to do is stand there and be like, okay, Mr. White Man, okay, <laughs> I see you killed my aunt and my grandma, I see you did that. <laughs> you expect them to laugh at the damn thing? Nah, they did what any smart man would do and defend their house. They loved their household. They loved their community. That's what they did. But you want to blame them for defending their lands? See why? God said our oppressors slay us and hold themselves not guilty. God hold you guilty, Mr. White Man. You European slave master. Read. And they that sell themselves. That's the key word right there. They that sell themselves. That's why like a lot of black people brain, a lot of Hispanic, a lot of Native American Indians. They that sell themselves. You want to know what it's God saying here? How we call it today is called sellouts. Our leadership, a bunch of sellouts. Want some names? Al Sharpton and Creflo Dollar and T.D. Jakes and Mr. Mustache himself. What's his name? Steve Harvey with his strawberry letters and stupidity. Like he know it all. That'd be the dumbest thing if you get counsel from Steve Harvey. All Steve Harvey would know how to do is two things, three things. Keep a good mustache line proper, tell jokes, and be a Sambo coon for the white man. That's all he know how to do. And act like a monkey, oh, we gotta add that in there. He said he wanted to act like a monkey for 10, and guess what? He was such a coon, he dropped the number down to four million. First he wanted 10 to act like a monkey, and said, you know what, I'll settle like a good coon for four million. You know what I'm saying? And many such leaders like him, they that sell themselves. And they that sell themselves, blessed be the Lord. Right? And they that sell them, our sellouts, right? Be saying, blessed be the Lord, because that check, that money, like Steve Harvey, got, what, what he got, four million. Four million for being a monkey, maybe more, who knows? But he a sellout. God knows when Trayvon Martin died, how much did Jesse Jackson got? And Al Sharpton and all of them. They got, they got the prestigious awards, you know what I'm saying? Black leaders love them, the black people, they side with them, love them to death. But the reality is, I hate to tell you this, black folks, those esteemed people of ours, they're killing us. They're hurting us. They ain't prospering us. You know what I'm saying? They ain't doing it for us. When they become famous, they do it for them and only for themselves. They forget about where they come from. Forget about the poor neighborhood that they come from. Forget about all the suffering black people have to suffer every damn day in America. And they go smile next to the European. They go smile next to the slave master. 
They say what? Bless be the Lord. Thank God for this check. You know what I'm saying? Thank God, Master, don't hate me. Yes, some Master and start dancing like, like a good old Sambo, tapping his shoes. It be feet and mustache with Steve Harvey. Read. For I am rich. Say it. Bottom line. God know this. God know about our leadership. You know what I'm saying? Read. And their old shepherds pity them not. Ain't that sad, right? Ain't that sad that our God recognized that our leadership are. I hate this. I want to say the word, but I'm gonna hold my my tongue right here. But our leadership think of us as dumb, as turds, and don't pity us. They don't care about. They don't care about what's happening in the black community. If they gave a damn about what's happening in the black community, they would have stood up and put up everything that they believed in, every money that every time that they made, and put it on the line. Kaepernick tried to do it. Kaepernick tried to do it. What he got? He didn't get the support from other black leaders. Not like that. He didn't get that. Instead, he got, he got what white people expected to give him. Hell. Read. Verse 6. Oh, that's it. Let's, let's go Isaiah now. Isaiah 47. You know what I'm saying? You children of the Europeans right here in America, y'all living it up and great and wonderful, right? Ain't that right? Everything is gravy for you. Good old Europeans, where, where you at? You build cities, right? You put up buildings, by, you know, on the back of slaves though, but you got buildings, right? You got a financial system going on, right? Ain't you, ain't you Europeans proud of that? Going up and down America on the very same soil that's filled with blood and bones of my brothers, the Native American Indians. You Europeans love the fact that you were able to come to this land and almost nearly wiped out everybody. You needed slaves, so you kept some around. The little ones that you, that you did keep around, you had to import more slaves. You had to import the brothers of these native Indians who were in Africa. Put them together in the, in the cotton fields, in the sugar cane fields, and pick cotton from Miss Betsy. Pick, pick cotton and sugar cane from Massa. Today, they build buildings. They, they use your Central American brothers, your black brothers, to go and build brand new buildings in Washington, D.C. The same people that you children of the Europeans are hurting. But God said, God got something for you. Let's read Isaiah 47, and let's go to verse 8. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 8. Therefore, he nailed this. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Read it again. Therefore, hear now this, thou that are given to pleasures. See that? You know what? You want to know who God is talking to right now? God is right here not talking to black people. Not talking to Hispanics. Not talking to Native American Indians. There's one people right now in this moment, in this verse, he is talking to. Read it again. Therefore, hear now this. God said, hear now this. Read. Thou that are given to pleasure. Thou that are given to pleasures. Wonder who God is talking to right now? He's talking to this white devil that walks on the on the on the on the, on the blood. Right? On the blood and bones of the Native American Indians. On the blood and bones of the people who he lynched on trees. On the blood and bones of these little babies who didn't get an opportunity in the Planned Parenthood clinics. He right now walking all up and down America, living in pleasure, living in all kinds of luxurious pleasure, right? You see it throughout the city. He got places of entertainment, places to fill his belly up, places to do whatever the hell he wants. He living in pleasure. Read. That dwellers careful. That dwellers what? Carelessly. That dwellers what? Carelessly. See that? This is the mind frame of the white man. Since he conquered everything, he ain't got a thing to worry about, so he thinks. He dwells carelessly. Meanwhile, blacks and Hispanics, we got to live like this, looking over our shoulder, looking over our backs, wondering when, what's that red and, and blue um, light coming down the block. Thank you, sis. You know what I'm saying? Wondering who they coming to arrest. Wondering who they coming to kick in the door. White men don't got to worry about that. He could live carelessly. He could live carefree, in other words. Read. 
that say it's in the hook. Water, General, that's right. Even that car squad, that was that was the news, right? Yeah. All right, you know what I'm saying? Come on, General. Even that Coast Guard, you heard about the news, right? The Coast Guard was prepping up to commit a terrorist act in America. The white, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a European. The descendant of you, one of them was slave, uh, children of the slave masters. He, you know what I'm saying? That ain't got nothing to do with gun control. I, I, Duara, Captain Duara, wasn't I all oh, last week talking about gun control? Huh? Well, wasn't that the news with all the politicians trying to get gun control? It's obvious it ain't the guns. <laughs> General, it's obvious it ain't the guns. It's white people who need gun control. You know what I'm saying? Why, why, that's the problem right there. The guns ain't doing it. It's the white people who put behind the gun that's doing it. Simple as that. You gotta put a safety on them. You know what I'm saying? You don't put no safety on the gun. Put a safety on the white man. Make sure, you know what I'm saying? Make sure he don't pull the trigger. You know what I'm saying? Right now, you people standing right here waiting for the bus. What's to say the next white man come out the subway and, 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 and think he worship our lot, come out locked down and, and spray everything? You know what I'm saying? Or go white power and, blah, and spray everybody. What's to say he won't do that? You gotta profile him these days. Apparently, the biggest criminal ain't black people. That's that's the thing about America. You have a careless people who also conspire against a people they make to suffer and talk evil about these people. But yet they go in there preparing to commit terrorist acts. They've done it so many times. Like, is that surprising that white people committed terrorist attacks? Anybody surprised about that? I'm not. I remember when they came in 1492. They showed us the, the, the extremities of their terrorist minds when they came and decimated the Taino Indians. There's a few of us alive. Then they came over here and did the same thing to the Native American Indians. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we already know the face of terrorism. Black people, do you know the face of terrorism? Hispanic, Native American Indians? You know what I'm saying? It's white people. Like it, ain't, it should not be shocking. Not in 2019. It should not shock a black man, a Hispanic, a Native American man, woman, a child, that the real terrorist on the planet Earth is the white man. That's why God right. said they didn't live carelessly. Read. That says in their heart. Says in their heart mean this is how white people think. Read. Are you? What he say? Are you? White people think because he's careless. He get carefree life, living in pleasures. Are you? His heart. He's saying, I am. Like, white people got a God complex in their brain. Got a God complex, you know what I'm saying? They, they think because they put, they able to put a space station up in the up above the atmosphere. They planning to go to Mars, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 they've done research on molecules and all that. They go to the deepest part of the oceans. They climb the highest mountains. They do all kinds of scientific experiments, cloning. You know what I'm saying? On uh, um, cyber science and all that, cyber engineering, all that. They think they God. They say I am. Read. And nothing else beside me. See that? That sounds like somebody conceited. I am, and none else beside me. You white people are conceited bastards. You white people are conceited bastard terrorists. That's to tell you the truth. Oh, does that hurt? Why should it hurt you? It's your life. It's your M.O. It's your M.O. No white person that walking up down the planet Earth could not say that they aren't terrorists. I'm not, they, they, they probably so damn proud. They say, well, I've never committed an act of terrorism. Yes, you have. You breathe the, the air, uh, the, the air that's in, in the land of what they call America today. You're walking on the bones of dead families, the Native Indians today. You understand? You are a terrorist. You come from a culture of terrorism. You, you understand? You gotta accept what you are, white people. You come from a culture and a generation of full-blown genocidal, genocidal maniac terrorists. Right. That's the that's the proper term, terminology for you. Genocidal maniac terrorists is what you are. Look, look at the evidence, white. And it's nothing personal. It's history, and it's your mo. That's why we got these signs out here to prove that what we're saying ain't made up fantasy. You know what I'm saying? Look at the lynching signs. Look at that. Look at that. 
Who does that except a, man, a, 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 a maniac terrorist? A genocidal, genocidal maniac terrorist with an abortion sign. Black people, ain't, black people don't do that. Black people didn't start that system. You understand? The, the people that was behind the eugenic movement, the eugenic movement was the one that designed the Planned Parenthood system to get rid of black people because in their mind, they said black people were human weeds. That's messed up. That's messed up. You know what I'm saying? And our leaders don't even care about that. So what's his name? Steve Harvey. I don't even remember the mustache. So like a general. I just, it's easy to remember the mustache. But Steve Harvey is one of them brothers who don't even consider the, 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 the maniac mind behind the system of Planned Parenthood. Who don't even consider that. Al Sharpton, Al Sharpton might talk about it, but to what extent? Until the white man said, here's this $2 million. Well, you are the, the what, $2 million? Oh, I can cash it today? Go look at that check book and sniff it and lick it, probably lick the, probably see if the serial numbers will come out. You know what I'm saying? It's real, massa. Okay. Black people, let's go home. Wrap it up. That's Al that's Sharpton. And for, right. forget about that walrus. What's his name? Uh, um, um, uh, T.D. Jakes. Forget about that walrus. He always up on stage sweating more than a little bit. You ever seen that? I ain't never seen the sweaty walrus until I saw What's the name? <laughs> T.D. Jakes. <laughs> That's the most moist preacher I've ever seen in my life, man. Come on. How you gonna be talking about God and dripping moist? Well, yeah, more moisture than a damn sponge. You know what I'm saying? And he breathing too. The, the white guy, he like, you know, I'm the Lord said. He don't just breathe, Captain. Hold on. He go, and the Lord said. <laughs> and then they all we had to do is ball behind that. You know what I'm saying? And then what happened? But, but, but he don't give a damn about bad people. That fool say that the white man is your brother. Well, let me see this. Um, let me use the example of the abortion sign. My brother won't create a system to kill my babies. You know what I'm saying? That don't happen in the family structure. If anything, you trust this family structure, you're going down. That's how it works. Any animal in the natural um, kingdom, right? You go mess with the cubs of a lion and see what happens. Hey, go mess with the cubs of a zebra. You know what I'm saying? And see what happens. How is it that they're more intelligent enough to defend their, it, it, to defend their, their children? We got to think the same way. Now we're not animals because we think, but, but we got to recognize that there is a terrorist, a, a homicidal, homicidal maniac terrorist that walked the face of the earth. What we got? So in his mind, he's saying, I am and there is no other. Read. I shall not sit as a widow. See that? That's the white man for you. In his mind, in his thought process, he's thinking, I'm not sitting like a widow, meaning the only way you get a widow is if you take away their husband, right? Black people, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, we grew up in a fatherless society. We grew up without dad in, at home. I know I was one. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of you brothers grew up in the household without dad and no protection. Anybody, anybody could have walked up to your crib and do whatever. Anybody. There is a person to blame, black man. And he walking right in front of us every day. Smelling like when you kick the, the sewage pipes. You ever smell, you ever kick the sewage pipes when the plumber come around and he loosen up the pipe and that smell? That's white man older for you. That's what he smell right. like. Old ancient doodle and killing us every day. And you gotta own up to own up to it, Mr. Terrorist. Right. Own up to it, you homicidal maniac. Oh, oh, uh, is that offensive? Well, look at, you see that lynching sign? This happened to my family. That's offensive. You see the black and Latinos right there in that picture? That's offensive. You see that abortion sign? That's offensive. So when we call you a homicidal maniac, don't feel offended, Mr. Terrorist, because it's you. It's your culture. Read. Neither shall I know the laws of children. The white man thinks he's not going to be with him, meaning he's never ever going to be without protection like the way black people and Hispanic people and Native American Indian are without protection. He also said what? Neither 
Shall I know the laws of children? Well, neither shall I know the laws of children. Well, guess what? Guess what, Mr. European? Guess what, colonizer? You are suffering loss of children these days. But your children, aren't they not? What is the, mo the number one most uh, um, death today? The op opioid epidemic, right? right? And it's only because they're dying at a high rate, it's become an epidemic. When black people and Hispanic people were dying left and right during the opioid epidemic, during the crack epidemic, and every other epidemic they put in our neighborhood, we were dying. It wasn't a cause for alarm. Nobody needed to talk about it. Ah, he died. It was a black man. Big deal, right? That's the attitude of America. That's the attitude of a European culture. That's the attitude of the slave master. That's, their, that's, their, that's how they are. It is not important when they happen. But as soon as they lose children in the shootout, where they go with a full, with a full throttle with all the weaponry they can find, and go to your school and blah, 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 like the way, what's they call it um, in Florida, the Park, Parkland, Parkland um, High School in Florida. You know what I'm saying? There, that was a problem. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I, this is incredible. I never thought in a little life. Too bad, take that. Take that, Mr. White Man. Lose children, take that. Does it hurt? Want me to cry? <laughs> I'm not crying. The Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge under commanding General Yohanna presents the Big 5-0. Oh, oh, oh. The 50th Annual Lord's Passover, Saturday, April 20th at sundown. Lord's Passover, Saturday, April 20th at sundown. Shalom. <laughs>